We're standing now near Auto Tour Stop 12 on the Gettysburg Battlefield Cemetery Ridge. And it would be here on Cemetery Ridge that the bulk of the Union Army was positioned on July 2nd and July 3rd, 1863. By the late afternoon on July 2nd, however, Cemetery Ridge was in danger. Union troops positioned at the Peach Orchard along the Emmitsburg Road were falling back in retreat, seeking the safety of the rear, and Confederates were moving forward. If Confederate troops were able to capture Cemetery Ridge, it could spell disaster for the Union Army of the Potomac. It would be up to the sacrifice of individual Union units, regiments, batteries that would spell the difference between victory and defeat in the Gettysburg Battlefield. Men like the 9th Massachusetts Battery that we talked about at the Trossel Farm, and men in the 1st Minnesota, the monument behind me. On July 2nd, 1863, the 1st Minnesota, commanded by Colonel William Koval, only numbered 262 men. In front of them, 1,700 men led by Confederate General Cadmus Wilcox, Alabamians, were advancing towards Cemetery Ridge. Alone and almost unsupported, the men of the 1st Minnesota would charge at the advancing Confederates, attempting to buy time, but to buy time with lives. They were able to stall the Confederate attack, but it cost them 82% of the men engaged. Other Union units, like the Reserve Artillery, led by Colonel Freeman McGilvery, would be able to fortify this stretch of Cemetery Ridge, and by 8 o'clock, victory eluded the Confederates. Silence settled over this end of the battlefield, and the fighting was over. Towering 110 feet above the Gettysburg Battlefield, the Pennsylvania Memorial honors many of the high-ranking officers of the Union Army of the Potomac from Pennsylvania that fought here during the battle. Men like George Meade, commander of the Army, men like John Fulton Reynolds, Winfield Scott Hancock, and others. But what makes the Pennsylvania Memorial truly unique is that it honors each of the 35,000 Pennsylvanians that fought in this battle. Their names are inscribed on the tablets surrounding the base of the memorial, making the Pennsylvania Memorial not just a monument to the high-ranking generals who commanded armies, but to the men who composed them as well. Confederate Lieutenant General James Longstreet would later call the fighting on July 2nd, 1863, the three best hours of fighting ever done by any man on any battlefield. Yet the fighting on July 2nd wasn't really over. The battle would continue in the darkness at Culpsill and Cemetery Hill, where we'll head next. <laughs>